I'm going to talk from this thought today, real simple. Look at your neighbor's neighbor. I won't complain. I won't complain. Come on, look at somebody else and say, I won't complain. And then I want, I want to tag you today and say, in everything to give thanks. In everything to give thanks. Amen. We complain too much about too much about too much when we ought to be thanking God for everything. Look at your neighbor's and neighbor. Don't be a complainer all your life. Jesus. Father, I thank you now for this moment you have given me to speak to the ears of your people and I pray that as I, as I preach this word today, it would penetrate the hearts of so many that are even watching on a live stream today. I pray, God, that we will forever give thanks for your goodness and your loving kindness that you've shown towards us. You've been good. You're a good, good father. You're a good, good daddy. You supply all our needs. And God, we just give you praise today. And for this, we give you glory. And it's in Jesus' name. And the people say, Amen. Amen. On your way to your seat, look at someone said, Don't complain. Don't complain. Don't complain. Don't complain. I won't complain. I won't complain. Can I have your undivided attention for a moment as I attempt to do what I have been assigned to do today? Um, <clears throat> I, cho I chose this backdrop today specifically so you can get a visual of a man that's homeless sitting on the ground lonely all by himself homeless sitting on the ground alone by himself and you have a roof over your head You have food in your refrigerator. And then you complain. Jesus. People are living literally on the streets. When I went to L.A. one year, I went to California, and I walked Skid Row. I was broken. I could not believe the people that was living homeless outside on the sidewalk, on the streets. And that was their place of residence. It was, it was just heart-wrenching. It was heartbreaking. I, I had never seen homeless, homelessness like that before. But people are literally living on the streets. So we should give thanks in all things because giving thanks is a response to the goodness of God. I say when you give thanks, it is a response. And you are responding to the goodness of God. Is there anybody in here thank God that he's good? And can I just submit this to you? And he, he's never been bad. Look at your neighbors and neighbor. God has been good, and he's never been bad. Because God's goodness does not change, hear me, it does not change based on your circumstances. Even if you complain, his goodness does not change. It does not change based on your circumstances like anything else. It's difficult to be thankful when you are not trusting fully in God's faithfulness. How many of you guys know that God is faithful? Now, we might not be faithful, but God is faithful. Watch this. Great is thy faithfulness towards us it's difficult to be thankful when you haven't yielded to the father always complaining yielded to the father it's difficult to be thankful when you please hear me when you are arrogant 
when you are displeased and anxious and focused on the negatives in your life. It's hard to be thankful when you're always looking at the negatives in your life. We're not realizing everybody go through something. You're not the only one that's going through something. But it, it reminds me whenever I go through something in life, it's building my faith. And it's drawing me closer to God, uh, whatever I go through. I need you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever you're going through, it's going to draw you closer to your daddy, Jesus and so it's difficult to be thankful when you are jealous or envious of others. Holding on to anger or bitterness, it's hard to be thankful when you're jealous and you're looking at what somebody else has and because you don't have it, you're jealous of another person. It's hard to be thankful when you're jealous. I'm sorry. It's just hard to be thankful when you're wrapped in the spirit of jealousy, it's hard to be thankful. I need you to look at someone and say, it's difficult. It, it's really difficult. It's difficult to be thankful when you forget about all the things God has brought you through. Okay, so let me borrow the lyrics of the psalmist. Through it all, through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus, I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned how to depend upon his word. I've been depending on everybody else, but finally, I've learned how to depend on God and not depend on my friends. Because your friends will let you down, but God will never let you down. Can someone shout amen up in here? And so in all honesty, when you are growing in the knowledge of God, you learn how to give thanks in every situation, good or bad. I thought it was bad when I lost my job at Brookshire's. I thought it was bad. I didn't know what I was. I had no idea that God was calling me to be a pastor more than being a store manager. He was calling me to be a pastor. Just think if I had never been fired. Jesus. It pushed me in my destiny. So that's why you can't discount bad things happening to you. It happens for, listen, okay, can I just go to the word? All things work together for good. All things work together for good. So please hear me. It doesn't matter whether you have plenty or in need because it's easy to complain and take what you have for granted. To take what you have for granted. See, it's difficult to be thankful when you take things for granted as if what God has done for you doesn't even matter. Jesus. See, it's difficult to be thankful when you take things for granted as if, you know, when, 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 when you are selfish and self-centered. We take others for granted. When we are greedy and materialistic, we take sharing with others for granted. And when we are condescending, Jesus, I never have experienced so many saints that are condescending and demeaning and don't care. We take people for granted. Jesus, I need you to look at somebody and say, people taking you for granted is a mistake. <laughs> did, you, did you hear what I just said? And let me talk to the live screaming audience. People taking you for granted moving forward is going to be a mistake. Jesus. They're going to look back on that and say, man, I never should have done him like that. I never should have done her like that. And they are going to have to repent. 
Jesus, 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 Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying? People taking your love for granted, it's going to be a mistake, I promise you. People taking your sacrifices for granted, it's going to be a mistake. Sooner or later, it's going to be a mistake. Someone shout and don't be scared and say, it's going to be a mistake. It's going to be a mistake. Amen, amen. Amen. You see me now, but you don't know my future. (laughs) <laughs> it's gonna you, you treat me bad now it's gonna be a mistake in the future because what God has for me it is for me it's gonna be the biggest mistake you ever made in your life Jesus 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 if if if, if God cared for the sparrow if he watches over the sparrow if he watches over the birds, at least he watch over you. You don't think he ain't watching over you? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. My grandmother used to say, he's looking and he's booking. Jesus. <laughs> he's looking and he's booking. What do you mean? He's watching what you, and he's writing it down in the book. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, God is looking and God is booking. And people might people might look at you now, but glory to God, it's gonna be a mistake in the future. They will wish they would have treated you better. Jesus, they they are gonna wish they would have treated you better, Jesus. So that so the air that you breathe, every time you take a breath, you can't be you can't take that for granted. I tell you what, inhale right now. Inhale and hold it. Inhale. Now let it out. You can't take that for granted. There's people at Oshner's Hospital which they could inhale and then exhale. Oh, I'm no, oh I know what I'm talking about. There's people, <laughs> Jesus, see, see your brain that controls your thoughts, that controls your memory, that controls your emotions and controls the temperature in your body, even the hot flashes. <laughs> Jesus, even your hunger and every process that regulates your body can be taken for granted. Jesus, you don't even think when you get up from that chair that you're going to walk down that aisle or walk wherever you're going to walk. You just know you when you get up. See, some folks take that for granted that they can walk. Jesus. Because you are able to taste, smell, hear, touch, and see. You can't take that for granted. Because there's people that came with smell. There's people that came with taste. There's people that can't even see Glory that you can't take that for granted because you're able to get out of your bed. You can't even take that for granted. Be, because you're able to be in your right mind. Don't you know there are folks that are not in their right minds? They're crazy out of their minds. They walk around talking to themselves or talking to someone that they can invisible person. You ought to thank God you're not talking to an invisible person. That you are still in your right mind. Come open your mouth and say, God, I thank you for my mind. Jesus, Jesus. See, you could have, you could have easily had an extra chromosome and develop challenges like Down syndrome. That's what it is. They have an extra chromosome. Jesus. And they develop down. You ought to thank God you're not Down syndromed. Oh my God, you, you don't even understand what I'm saying. You ought to thank God, God, that you're not Down syndrome. Just even that ought to be a praise out of your mouth. Are, are you hear what I'm saying? See, don't take your life for granted. 
I need you, I need you to look at someone and say, don't take your life for granted. Come on, look at somebody and tell them. See, you taking your life for granted. You know, when, when Boo Boo got shot down the street, you can't, you can't take your life for granted. When someone overdosed this last week over drugs, you can't take your life for granted. Jesus. You know that you're not on pain pills. You cannot take your life for granted. You can't take it for granted. I mean, you can be driving in your car and get shot now. Jesus. You can be minding your own business and get shot now. Jesus. Jesus. You, you cannot take your life for granted. You, got to, you ought to thank God every day for your life, for your health, and for your strength. Come on, tell your neighbor, neighbor, I thank God for my life. I thank God for my health. And I thank God for my strength. Jesus, Jesus. You ought to rejoice and be glad in it. <laughs> Whatever your it is, because everybody got an it. Whatever your it is, you ought to be glad in it. Yes. Jesus. Look at your neighbor and neighbor say, you ought to be glad in your it. Whatever your it is. Your, everybody got an it, but you ought to be glad in it. In fact, you could be on life support, grasping for air. I mean, think about it. You could have had a stroke. Listen, listen. Let, let me tell you why I'm so thankful. My blood pressure stayed up around 190, 195, 198. That stroke for years. God kept me from having a stroke. I could be paralyzed on my right side. I couldn't even be using this hand and this arm right here. I could have had a stroke. You ought to thank God that you, ain't, you haven't had a stroke. That your face went numb on one side and your, now your face is disfigured. You ought to thank God you never had a stroke. Jesus. Jesus. So why... Are you complaining? That's the big elephant in the room. Why are you complaining? Okay. So let me come closer. You could have died of COVID. We could have had your funeral. You could have transitioned during COVID-19. You got friends that died. You got coworkers that died. You got neighbors that died. You got relatives that died. You got church members that died. But look at God let you live. Don't you know you owe God some praise? You owe God some thanks? Glory, did y'all... Um, you owe God praise I said you owe God praise you could have died perhaps this is why the Bible says to rejoice in the Lord always and then the Bible said and again I say rejoice see because sometimes we forget to rejoice we, we, we forget to rejoice. And then the Bible said, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with, here it is, thanksgiving. So you, you, you just can't have prayer and supplication. You got to have some thanksgiving. 
God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Woke me up. God, I thank you. Being good. God, I thank you. You just can't have prayer and something, but you gotta have thanksgiving. Then let your requests be made known unto God. Watch this. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and keep your mind through Christ Jesus. I need you to look at your neighbors. The neighbors say you ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Look at your neighbor across the room and say, neighbor, you ought to rejoice and then be glad in it. Is there anybody in here that can rejoice? Is there anybody in here that can rejoice? Is there anybody in here that can rejoice? You ought to rejoice and then be glad in it. Look at the neighbor and say, neighbor, rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, always, always. Jesus, rejoice in the Lord always. And so you ought to be thankful. And then bless God and, and bless God at all times. Be in the good or the bad at all times. I, 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 I understand, say, Pastor, how do, how do you do that? It's, it's, that's hard to be thankful. All, no, it's not. Every time, every, every time you think about how good God has been, past tense has been when you look back over your life you could be in jail but God's been good you you could be in the and in, 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 then I'm going to say it like this the old folks home someone turning you over and changing changing your depend because your, your depend is soggy, it's wet. You can't change yourself. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, first lady been there before. I, I had to change my wife. I had to change her. We had to buy the pens. And then she would she would wet them and I would I, I want to change it and, and sometimes she would wet in the bed. I had to change the bed. See, you don't know what we've been through. When she couldn't even think for herself, she she was in was not in her right mind. You wasn't you wasn't there when I had to say, baby, what's wrong with you? When she was just sitting in the chair looking up in the ceiling, looking inside the wall. We're trying to figure out what's wrong with you. You don't want to go nowhere, you don't want to do nothing you don't even understand what I'm saying I've been there I thank God that God let my wife live and she don't look like what she been through <laughs> I said she don't look like what she been through I said and she don't look like what she been through come on give God praise for first lady's life I remember when I called my kids into the room at the hospital and told my kids, the doctor said, your mama got a tumor on the brain, her brain the size of an orange. But that was a hard moment for me to tell my kids, Jesus, you know, to tell my kids. And, we, and then they were saying, well, she might not have this working when after surgery she might not be like this after surgery and we don't know how she's going to respond to this after surgery because you understand they cracked they they cracked her skull open and pull her face down pull her face down on her skull to go in and get the two y'all don't even understand what i'm saying <laughs> i said they pull her face down they're going to get it said she might not be the same. But then uh, the day of the, after the surgery, the day of, I saw nurses coming out of the, out of her room with tears running down their face. Because she's in there prophesying to them. She's in there speaking life into them. She just had surgery. But I'm here to tell you that God is a good God. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise right there. Jesus, I remember when they had to scrap her, a scrap her with that walker. She had to walk down the hallway like this. 
And she had to stop. I said, baby, because you're okay? Yeah, she said, I'm going to be okay. And she had to walk. And then they told me I couldn't film in the hospital. It's against the hip of law. I said, the devil is alive. I got to get this on video. I kept filming <laughs> with her walking like this. But now look at her. Jesus. Now look at her. Jesus. She's feisty. She got energy. <laughs> she ain't got no filter. Jesus. Look at what the Lord has done. Somebody give God praise right there Jesus you, you, you don't even understand you don't even understand Jesus Jesus so you you, you, you ought to be thankful in the good or the bad at all times because you confuse the devil when you ought to be in a corner with your head down you confuse the devil because he expect you to go sit in the corner and start weeping like a baby. See, you confuse the devil when, when the facts are even true. But you open your mouth and you bless God anyway. Jesus. Yeah, I start singing to myself, no more gout in my life. Mm -hmm. I made up a song, glory to God. Because I said gout will not be a part of my life all my life in Jesus. Jesus, you don't you, you don't even understand. I, I I even give God praise for my kidneys. You don't even understand when I say that. Jesus, I went to the doctor and the doctor said, "Look, man, something wrong with your kidneys, and the, and you seem like you got uh, chronic kidneys, the kidney disease, and you at stage three, and we got to keep you there because you get to stage five, you got to go and get." Dialysis? I said, the devil is a lie. If I'm going to start taking, getting, taking dialysis at stage five, I start working on my kidneys. Amen. I start drinking more water. Drinking more water. I start drinking more water. I start drinking more water. Drink, drinking more water. I start drinking more I start drinking more water. I start drinking more I start drinking more water. 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 No more Coke. No more Pepsi. I start drinking more water. I start drinking more Jesus I want my kidneys I give God praise for my kidneys you don't even understand I give God praise for my kidneys come on give God a kidney praise thank God for your kidneys I thank God for my kidneys. Thank God for my kidneys. So I confuse the devil when the facts are true, but yet I open my mouth and I bless, bless God. Perhaps this is why the Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad and then the Bible says and I like this oh magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together let me say it one more time oh magnify the Lord with me I ain't got it yet. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Y'all still ain't got it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Y'all still ain't got it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Come on, do it together. Do it together. Come on, clap your hands. Clap, clap. I refuse to close my mouth. I refuse to close my mouth. Jesus, Jesus. Sherry, you got a testimony. You refi I refuse to close my mouth. 
You was in that accident. You got to tell you, I refuse. You was sick the other week with the flu. You, I refuse. Glory to God. <laughs> Somebody open your mouth and say, I refuse to close my mouth because God has been too good to me. Watch it. Let me go old school. He brought me through danger and unseen danger. If my mama was here today, my mama would tell you he brought me through danger and unseen danger. Jesus, Jesus. somebody open your mouth. Say, <laughs> look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, say, you got to open your mouth. You got to open your mouth. If you watch it on the live screen, I want you to type and say, open your mouth. So the Bible says, listen to what the Bible says, Shaq. Listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says, oh, give thanks, destiny. <laughs> oh, give thanks in, in everything to give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Watch this. Give thanks in every situation, no matter what the circumstances are and what's ever happening in your life. In other words, stop crying. Stop crying and complaining about people and things that you can't change. Y'all didn't even hear what I just said. Stop complaining about people and the things that you cannot change. Because sometimes, sometimes, somebody say sometimes, sometimes God won't change it. He'll, he'll say my grace is sufficient. Come on now. Come on. Am I in the book? Am I in the book? He had a thorn in his flesh. And he prayed three times. And ask God to remove his throne, his thorn that was in his flesh. But God said, uh uh, uh, uh you have to live with this one because my grace is sufficient. So look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever you're going through, his grace is sufficient. So the boy, you gotta stop crying. Stop crying. Stop, stop being a crybaby. Crybabies are people that constantly complain about things that don't make any cotton picking sense. Always complain. I, 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 in fact, I, yeah, I gotta be honest. I hate to be around complaining people. They're always complaining. Always complaining about this. Complaining about that. Make me sick of my stomach. Always complain. See, you can reverse how you respond to circumstances when you give thanks no matter what. You can reverse how you respond. Yeah, I know what the doctor said, but God, you're a healer. For it is God that healeth thee. Doctor, I heard what you just said, and I understand that's your medical you know, because you know, you know, that's your medical. You know, I understand. But I got a God that can heal my body. Jesus, Jesus. I need you to look at your neighbors and neighbors and reverse how you respond. You you got to reverse how you respond. You 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 got to reverse how you respond to sickness and disease. You got to reverse how you respond when your money gets funny. When your honey gets funny. You got to reverse how you respond. I can stay right there for a minute. You got to, be, you, you got to change how you think about things when things don't always go your way. Because God is able to bring it to pass, but sometimes God lets you stay in that mess. So when you come out of that mess, 
you will know that it was God that got you out of that mess. It wasn't your boyfriend, it wasn't your girlfriend, it wasn't your money, it was not your, even your influence. It was God that got you out of that mess. Is there anybody that thank God he got you out of that mess? 